This is CR400, one of China's most iconic high-speed trains, recognized for its sleek design and impressive operate at a cruise speed of 217 miles per hour and a maximum speed of 261 miles per hour in commercial service. Pretty fast, right? But if you thought that was the peak of speed, just hear this. For nearly a decade, China has been developing its next-generation high-speed series, the CR450, designed to reach a test speed of 280 miles per hour and an expected operating speed of 250 miles per hour, outpacing the CR400 and setting a new benchmark for passenger rail travel. In a recent update, Chinese media revealed new footage and details about the CR450 prototype, confirming that it is now undergoing rigorous testing. It's not just about faster trains, the CR450 represents a major step in China's broader vision to expand its high-speed rail network from 48,000 kilometers today to 60,000 kilometers by 2030. Now, compare that to the US. While China is breaking speed records and expanding its network, America is still figuring out how to get these high-speed rail projects off the ground. The CR450 shows just how far ahead China is when it comes to train tech, and it's leaving the US behind. So what exactly is the CR450? What can the US learn from China, and finally close the gap? Let's dive into today's episode of Great Train Speed. Right now, there are two main prototypes, the CR450AF and CR450BF. Both are part of China's next-gen bullet train lineup designed to push the limits of speed and technology. These trains were developed by China State Railway Group, and they're already being called the fastest bullet trains in the world. The goal? Not just to compete with other trains, but to give airplanes a real run for their money, especially on shorter domestic routes where speed and price matter most. The CR450 project officially kicked off in 2021, and China's been moving fast ever since. In just three years, the team completed over 3,000 simulations and ran 2,000 platform tests to make sure everything, from aerodynamics to braking systems, is safe and reliable at ultra-high speeds. The big moment came on December 29, 2024, when the CR450 prototype was officially unveiled in Beijing. So where will the CR450 actually run? Right now, several routes are being considered. First up, is the Beijing-Shanghai Corridor. This is one of the most heavily traveled and profitable high-speed rail lines in the country. If the CR450 is deployed here, it could cut the travel time from about 4.5 hours down to just over three. The train has also been tested on other lines, which suggests these routes are being considered for regular CR450 service. All of these tests are part of the plan to make sure the train runs smoothly across different terrains and operating environments. So what's got everyone talking about this new train? What's inside that's catching so much attention? That is just one cool trick this train shows. But let's get back to the details from A to Z. First, each train comes with eight cars. Four are powered and four aren't. This setup helps balance the train and makes it more efficient when it's cruising at high speeds. It's also built to be 10% lighter than older models, thanks to a mix of carbon fiber and aluminum. That means it uses less energy and therefore can accelerate faster. Underneath, it's powered by a water-cooled permanent magnet traction system, which is more energy efficient than traditional setups. A high-stability bogey system keeps the ride smooth, even at top speed. When it comes to safety, the CR450 doesn't cut corners. It's got over 4,000 sensors monitoring everything in real time. Even the ride experience is better. With built-in noise reduction tech, interior sound levels are down by about two decibels, which might not sound like much, but makes a noticeable difference in comfort. Moving on to the design of the train, compared to the older CR400, the design is sharper and more aerodynamic with a longer pointed nose built for high-speed performance. Visually, it stands out. Instead of the usual white or blue, the CR450 comes in metallic silver with bold accents in black, red, and green. It's flashier, more modern, and when parked next to older trains, it belongs to the next generation. 
the build quality also feels more refined. Panels are smoother, seams are tighter, and even the small details like labeling look updated. Step inside the CR450, and the first thing you notice is cabin space has been increased. The cabin's been redesigned to offer 4% more room. In standard class, the seats are wide and well-cushioned, with soft curved headrests, crisp white covers, and a clean beige and red color scheme that feels modern, but not flashy. There's plenty of legroom, wide armrests, and cool-toned ceiling lights that give off a soft modern glow, more like a premium lounge. And if you're looking for an upgrade, business class on the CR450 takes things further. The layout looks more like a first-class airline cabin, with extra-wide leather seats, more space between rows, and personal controls built into each seat. The lighting here steps it up with patterned LED designs across the ceiling, adding a futuristic feel without going over the top. Also, the train's got adjustable luggage racks and a flexible storage area that makes it easy to bring along bikes, wheelchairs, or whatever else you're carrying. It's all designed with future rules in mind too, so if regulations change, the setup's already ready to go. Just smart planning that makes travel easier for everyone. From extra legroom to whisper quiet cabins, everything on board is built for comfort and privacy. Less noise, more space, and a ride so smooth, it turns a quick trip into something you'll actually want to experience again. Best service in the world? Let us show you why. So let's be real. When it comes to high-speed trains, China is way ahead. Over the past few years, they've built the biggest and fastest high-speed rail network on the planet. And now, with the CR450 hitting test speeds of 280 miles per hour, they're taking things to a whole new level. Meanwhile, in the US, it's a different picture. The country leads in a lot of areas, but when it comes to trains, it's kind of been left behind. Most funding in the US has gone into roads and planes, not rail. That's why Amtrak is still the main option for long distance train travel. And even its fastest line, the Acela, tops out at around 150 miles per hour, running on tracks that are decades old. Delays are common, and in some parts of the US, a train going over 110 miles per hour is already called high speed. The Bright Line in Florida started service in 2018, and it's the only real new passenger rail system to show up in that time. But the top speed is only 125 miles per hour. Over the last decade, from 2015 to 2025, China has rolled out multiple new train series. Each one builds on the last, pushing faster speeds and better tech. It's been non-stop progress. Meanwhile, in the US, progress has been a lot slower. As for the Avelia Liberty, Amtrak's next-gen train for the Northeast, it's still not in service yet, though it's supposed to launch soon. Another example is the Illinois-Chicago High-Speed Rail Project. It's been under construction for nearly 20 years, yet the maximum speed the trains aim for is only 110 miles per hour. Another big reason for the difference? Funding. China's rail system is backed heavily by the government. Just to give you an idea, in 2014, they set aside over $130 billion for railway investment. By 2017, that jumped to over 1.2 trillion yuan, around $180 billion. And they added more than 3,000 kilometers of new lines. Fast forward to 2024, and China's still investing. Over $700 billion more was committed to boost connectivity across the country. Now compare that to the US, where experts point out that while the country has an extensive rail network, actual funding for passenger rail remains limited at around $66 billion. In fact, the Trump administration previously moved to cut federal support for the Texas Central High Speed Rail Project. The same circumstance came with North Carolina High Speed Train S Line when it faced freeze funding under the Trump administration. It's a sharp contrast that highlights where the real priorities lie. In America, most transportation funding still goes to highways and air travel. Right now, Brightline is one of the only good high-speed train stories in the US, with another one called Brightline West connecting LA and Las Vegas in the near future. However, even Brightline is having its own financial issues. We recently covered that story on our channel. So, when you line it up next to what China's already achieved with CR450 and its nationwide network, there's still a huge gap to close. And yeah, 
While China's rolling out next-gen trains like the CR450, the US is still trying to upgrade to what China had 10 years ago. All of these point to one thing, China's not slowing down. This train isn't just about breaking speed records. It shows how consistent investment, long-term planning, and political will can completely reshape a country's transportation system. The CR450 proves that for China, high-speed rail isn't just possible. It's already a reality. And if this train is any preview of what's coming next, the rest of the world has some serious ground to make up. That wraps up today's video. Thanks for sticking around. Hope you had as much fun watching as we did making it. Catch you in the next one.